Time for another video. This time we'll go into more details on the fourth postulate, namely on uh, time evolution of quantum systems. So reminder, the postulate number four said that the time evolution of a system um, or, or of a state phi as a function of time is described by this evolution equation ih bar um, the time derivative of phi is equal to the operator h which can be a function of time applied to that state phi. Um, so that's a differential expression, the Hamiltonian operator, a linear operator, Hermitian operator even, um, that plays a, a role there and that we will associate with the energy of the system. This time evolution uh, postulate is valid only for closed quantum systems. What's a closed quantum system? Well, it's similar to what, we, uh, what we're known uh, what, what we know is, is necessary for classical systems, we have to be able to describe the entire quantum system through that state phi. So um, this doesn't work, uh, for example, if we have an atom that interacts with other quantum systems, for example, a quantized field or other, qu uh, other atoms in, in the system. So that single atom would be a closed quantum system, um, but only in the entire system of all atoms of the atom and the quantized field interacting with each other would be the closed system. So that closed system with all of the quantum systems um, be described, the time evolution of that closed system would be described by the evolution postulate. If we're trying to describe individual quantum systems that uh, that are not closed, then uh, we could um, come back to that, and that those would be open quantum systems. Um, that's a, a field um, in, of, uh, of quantum mechanics in its own right. Now, it uh, it's it's useful to look a little bit more closely at this time evolution postulate because of the difference in uh, interpretation that it brings compared to classical physics. So, um, in classical physics. Uh, we can describe the state of the system completely uh, and we know there is a, a state of a system that is valid um, and so when we measure the state of the classical state of a system we can describe the history of the system based on that state based on the observables that is of course not possible anymore in quantum systems so let's look at that in a little bit more detail we can describe uh, our quantum system um, only by measuring it, or basically what we do is we prepare a quantum system in a certain state, phi at a time t0. Um, and how do we prepare that quantum system? We do that measuring a property A and then collapsing the, the quantum state into uh, an eigenstate of um, that property A. So that's the way we um, prepare our quantum system at a time t0. And then the time evolution takes over. Um, there's this unitary time evolution given by the postulate. Um, that uh, allows us to describe the evolution of the system from t0 to the time t. And at time t, we measure another property, a prime, um, for that state phi at the time t, described by uh, um, the unitary evolution. And what we will measure now is another eigenvector, an eigenvector of the property a prime. Uh, and we will measure that eigenvector with a certain probability. So um, phi at time 0 can not um, be used to go back in time. It can only be used to describe the evolution of the system forward in time. Since what happened during our preparation of our, our system in this uh, state phi at time zero, that um, irreversibly destroyed any, um, any description of the state we would have had before time t zero. Uh, so, uh, the collapse of the of the of the quantum state in one of those eigenvectors really um, affects this behavior. So only for time evolution can be described starting at time t zero between time t zero and t and under future times. Um, in case we do a measurement at t, um, there we can of course move forward backward as we wish. So we could go from a t zero to a time t back to a time t one. Um, so that would work, but we cannot cause um, measurement operations with our, uh, our time evolution operation. So if we uh, um, if we look a little bit in more detail um, at our time evolution operation, uh, we, we can look at uh, uh, the normalization. So if we look at the norm squared and look at the time derivative of that, uh, we will work through this. We apply our time evolution here um, in, uh, in the operator in our expectation values. I seem to have forgotten a, an angle bracket there. Um, so then we find that because of the Hermitian nature of the Hamiltonian, we end up with a zero time derivative, or in other words, our time derivative keeps our normalization um, 
uh, as expected for probability um, amplitudes and for probabilities. Uh, so, uh, so that makes uh, short ed or, or, or description here earlier when I call this unitary evolution indeed is, is unitary since it doesn't um, change the norm of uh, the vectors that we're uh, transforming. We can apply the same kind of the derivation or the same kind of approach to a, a description in a fixed basis. So if we look at the basis um, given by our, eigen, by our vectors uh, n and uh, we expand our state phi in terms of uh, coefficients c, then we can look at the, the total sum of those coefficients, uh, which is of course the norm of that state, but in the matrix representation or in a basis representation, uh, we can show that that is also equal to um, equal to one, that sum is equal to one. So it takes some time um, to, to satisfy yourself that that's indeed, uh, in, indeed true. Uh, we can look further now at the matrix representation um, of uh, the Hamiltonian. So if we do that in a fixed basis, so, so in both this example or in both this application to the matrix representation of H and previously the matrix representation of the state itself, um, we're using a fixed basis so that the basis vectors themselves are not evolved, they don't, they don't change. Um, they're just fixed, for example, x, y, and z um, uh, uh, spin projection operators or, or the plus, rather the plus and the minus um, spin one half uh, projection operator in um, spin direction in the z, uh, in, in the z direction. So if you look at the matrix representation um, for our uh, Hamiltonian operators, we can again look at our, our time evolution. Um, equation, insert a uh, completeness equation here, um, we'll end up with our matrix elements or our, um, uh, expectation values of the Hamiltonian between basis states, um, and then here we have our coefficients. So we'll end up with this matrix expression for the differential expression of the time evolution equation, and that tells us how the uh, time derivative of one coefficient changes with respect to time um, and uh, the Hamiltonian operator operating on all of the uh, coefficients. So summarizing this, uh, this discussion of the time evolution, um, there's basically two ways in which we can change the, the state of a quantum system. Uh, so one of them is to make measurements that cause the quantum state to collapse a eigen, um, eigenvector of the property of the linear operator associated with the property that we're measuring. So that is a irreversible uh, change with respect to time. We cannot go back before that state. It also therefore doesn't make sense to talk about the value of that, um, of that uh, pro physical property before the measurement, since there, there was no information, there was no unique value, so it doesn't make sense to talk about that. Um, so this is an irreversible change with respect to time, and therefore it's also not a unitary um, change with respect to time. We can't describe it as a unitary matrix. Uh, and then the other time evolution happens um, in a reversible unitary fashion and that's what is described by the evolution equation. So um, this is reversible again when no measurements are performed between time zero um, and, and time uh, t. Uh, so it, it, it changes in a, in a reversible and continuous fashion between those times and uh, so any, any measurement between time zero and t would of course cause a, a change in the quantum system similar to the, or, or described by the quantum state collapse um, in, uh, in, in the first case here. Okay, we'll talk about, more, about that a little more in the next video.